Midweek prayer meeting is Wednesday at 7 p.m. We have the doctrine and the baptism preparation class every Friday at 7 p.m. And also, remember next Sabbath, we have our Women's Day. So we would like to remember, uh, remind all the ladies to wear your navy blue or yellow, whichever your choice selection is. Um, and we will have a full day of worship next Sabbath. We've got our speaker who is coming from Houston, Texas. And we want to wish her safe travels during the week as she prepares to come and um, give service to the Lord that day. We also want to remember the Youth Day, which is coming up on March the 14th. And also remember our missing members who are sick and shut in. Um, Sister Shed and her family, the bereavement for our dear Elder Shed. Sister Alicia White, who is recovering from her surgery. And Sister Telford, who is also... Um, I believe um, healing from an ailment as well. Um, sister Mary, who lost her sister, and my husband John, who is on the mend, we thank you for um, bringing him back to us um, and reviving his health as well. Um, and I believe that is it for the day. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, church, once again. And just for a pastoral remarks, uh, Pastor, pray for Pastor. He's in love this week, Amen. And just, uh, just remember all the things that's going on at the church during the week. And anyone that, everyone, whichever ones you can make it out to, just make out to the ones you can make it out to. And just pray that we have a blessed rest of the Sabbath day, Amen. Amen. I would like to say good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Oh, I thought that was a really that, that was a delay. I was trying to see if I'm still. I looked down and I looked back up. I want to make sure I'm not in the house by myself. Happy <laughs> Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We're gonna uh, stand if, uh, if everyone would stand and take. Well, you can take your Bible and read along with me uh, in Second uh, Samuel. Chapter 12 and verses 7 through 9. 2 Samuel chapter 12, 7 to 9. 7 through 9. <clears throat> and it reads, And Nathanael said to David, Thou art the man. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel. And I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if thou had been, if, if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee search and search things. Wherefore 
hast thy despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in his sight. Thou hast killed Ural the Hittite, which, I mean, with a sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Amen. I would like to say good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I thought that was a really, that, that was a delay. I was trying to see if I'm still, I looked down and I looked back up. I want to make sure I'm not in the house by myself. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We're going to uh, stand, if, uh, if everyone would stand and take, well, you can take your Bible and read along with me uh, in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12. And verses 7 through 9. 2 Samuel chapter 12, 7 to 9. 7 through 9. <clears throat> and it reads, And Nathanael said to David, Thou art the man. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy masters' this house, and thy masters' this wives, into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if thou had been, if if that had been too little, I would, moreover, have given unto thee search and search things. Wherefore? has thy despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in his sight. Thou hast killed Ural the Hittite, which, I mean, with a sword, and has taken his wife to be thy wife, and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. the reading of that word, Sister Johnson. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for prayer. It says intercessory prayer. You know what intercessory prayer means? Amen. We pray for someone else. Amen. Amen. It's good to pray for other people. Some people can't pray for their own selves. So with intercessory prayer, we pray for one another. Amen. Amen. And as a church, each and every week, we should be praying for one another each and every day. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you may not feel like praying that day, but someone is praying on your behalf. Amen. Amen. So the church should always be praying for one another in the whole church each and every day as we go throughout the day. So at this time, we're going to go into that prayer this morning. And so I'm just going to ask all those who are able to kneel at this time as we seek the Lord in prayer this morning. come to you this morning on bended knees. We're thanking you for life, for strength, and for health. For you are the giver of life, dear Heavenly Father, and you decided to let us all live to see another day. We're so thankful for that. Another blessed Holy Sabbath day on top of you, Lord, where we can come to church and meet with you, dear Heavenly Father. The day that you have set apart for us, dear Lord, to come and show our allegiance to you. So, Lord, we thank you for that. And so we're going to be doing the same thing when we get to heaven from week to week, dear Lord. It says from one new, to, uh, from one, one new moon to another, Sap to sap, we're going to come under your guidance, dear Heavenly Father, and meet with you, dear Lord. And you're going to teach us throughout eternity, Lord. We'll still be learning, dear Heavenly Father. We won't know everything there is to know. So we'll be still learning each and every day as we're in heaven. So, Lord, we're so thankful for that. But, Lord, we got to make it there first, dear Heavenly Father. So, as we live in this world, as we study this morning, the Lord, we're living in the last days, dear Heavenly Father. And in the end time, we know that the things that are going on in the world, dear Heavenly Father, so so much uh, things are happening, Lord, that uh, it's, it's just crazy, dear Heavenly Father. We're just praying, Lord, that you will bless us and keep us, dear Heavenly Father. As my nephew and his sister was shot this weekend in Milwaukee, dear Heavenly Father, him, her and, and her friend, both killed by her brother, dear Heavenly Father. So we see crazy things that are going on, dear Heavenly Father. So, we, you know, we could just be an innocent lion in the line of fire, dear Heavenly Father. So we have to have our lives right 
with you, Lord. In order to get the Lord, we have to study that word. We have to pray. We have to come to church there, Father. We have to do the things that you command us to do there, Father. And we and we do them because we love you there, Father. And and, and so we just pray your name for all that you do for us, all that you continue to do for us. We ask that you be with the pathfinders and those leaders that are with them, dear Lord, as they're capping out the Lord that you continue to watch over and protect them, dear Lord, that they may have a good time, dear Lord, and that they may learn more about you also. Um, while they're up there also. Be with the pastor, dear Lord. Love him, dear Lord, today. Bless him there. May they have a blessed day there. Also, dear Lord, continue to be with those who are sick, dear Lord. Uh, and, uh, that's out, dear Lord, today. Bless them. Heal their bodies. Continue to be with those who have been through surgeries and you continue to heal them, dear Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, you just being good to us there, Heavenly Father. And all we can do is just say thank you for each and everything that you've done for us as we go throughout the uh, each and every day, dear Lord, may we come closer to you. But then, most of all, dear Lord, we're praying, dear Lord, that we each and every person in the sound of my voice may be saved yeah. in your kingdom, dear Lord. Not only them, but their families also, dear Lord. We just don't want to go to heaven by ourselves, dear Heavenly yeah. Father. We would love for our families to be there, too. But it's a choice that everyone has to make on their own. Yeah. So, dear Heavenly Father, we pray that we may be great witnesses from day to day, dear Heavenly Father, as people are looking at us and people need the truth, dear Heavenly Father. And, and people just need a friend. And then, dear Lord, they need you. So, dear Lord, may we lead and guide each and every person that we can. Bless us throughout the rest of this Holy Sabbath day, dear Lord. Bless me as I speak to the Lord today. That sit me down let the Holy Spirit speak to me, dear Lord, also. And dear Heavenly Father, most of all, once again, save us in your kingdom. This is my prayer in your son's precious holy name. Amen. Amen. You know, every time you stand before the Lord, you want to make sure, you know, a lot of times we don't feel worthy, <laughs> but he's worthy. Amen. And so, you know, I just say, Lord, you all this stuff going around and you have this uh, stuff in your throat and just cause or whatever. But we just have to move on because we serve a good God. And I was just wrestling with him and asking him, Lord, what can we sing? He always gives you confirmation. God has been so good to all of us, and I know that all of us can testify to that. So y'all pray for us. Just how good the Lord has been to me. 
deacons come forth as we lift the tithe and the offering. I know each and every one of y'all can testify how good God is and how good he has been. And I'm one, I have always believed in to returning a tithe and offering. You know, because not so much as the monetary part, God is just faithful anyway with all of that. But God has been so good to me where that even when I didn't even have insurance, he didn't allow me to uh, have to go through anything major. And you know, with the insurance and stuff we're dealing with today, you have insurance today and tomorrow, you might not even have, because it's so expensive. But you know what, my trust is not in, uh, in a man, it's in God. And we've been getting a, 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 a health nuggets with Brother John is the superintendent. You know, God done asked us to take care of ourselves. And sometimes we fi find ourselves falling short because I'm guilty. So anybody in the house, I'm not throwing rock because I'm guilty. But God has been so good. He keeps us even when we don't even do what we need to do. But when we are faithful in uh, giving back to God what he has asked us to give, he's got to do what he said. You know, I'm not worried about when the rent, the money is low. I'm not worried about when the, the bill can be paid. But I'm going to let you know I'm going to make God first. And he always make a way. And so uh, when we return to God, what I already belong to him, you know, even our lives belong to him. You know, it's him that gives us help and uh, strength to even go get well. So we just want to thank him for his goodness and for him being so good for us. Bring you all the time into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that you shall not have room enough to receive it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this offering and ask that it will go to do and what it was set out to do. Lord, when it leave our hand, it's not no longer our money. It wasn't ours in the beginning. But Lord, we return it back to you. And we ask that you would bless those who had and those who had not to give, that they would purpose in their hearts, Lord, to be faithful to you, no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We give
go ahead and do the story because she's not going to be able to be available. So our story today is going to be about a little boy and some jelly or jam. And before we tell the story, we're going to have a prayer. Ready? Jesus, help us to understand the story. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. There was a little boy. His mother had made lots. How can you eat jelly or jam? How can you eat this? Put this on bread. Can you eat some? Yes. We have a wonderful time eating peanut butter sometimes and jelly. Or sometimes we like to eat other things, crackers and jelly. This one wants to use different ways of eating. Well, his mother made their jelly. She made a big bunch. She made about 30 jars. And in her jars were not great. She had strawberry. And guess what? His favorite kind was strawberry. And so he was outside playing and he could smell the strawberries and he could smell what his mother was doing. And they had all cooled and she had put them in the jar. And then when she decided she's fine, I have to run next door to the neighbor. It won't take me but a minute, and I'm going to be right back. And she had finished stacking all <coughs> of her, put all of her jelly in the jar and put them on the shelf. So she put them on the shelf, and he was just thinking, oh, Mom has made strawberry jelly. So while she was away, he thought, I think I'll go in the kitchen and look at the jars of strawberry jelly. So he went into the kitchen, got to looking. And then he said, I don't think it would be bad for me to get me a jar of strawberry jelly. So he got him a step stool. He stepped up on it because there were different shelves. And he said, oh, I can reach that. And just as he was getting to reach that jar of jelly, crash, it went down. And the whole shelf, he thought, I'll hold on to the shelf because I'm falling. And the whole shelf fell over. And 30 jars of jelly broke. And glass was going everywhere. And not only that, he was under the shelf. And he was screaming, help! And his mother had just stepped back in the door and she heard him. She ran into the kitchen. And there he was with jelly all over his hair, jelly all over his clothes, and jelly everywhere off the floor, and glass. And she said, oh, is he killed? The shelf fell on him. And so she went to look and see if any blood. There was no blood. So she said, well, I'll get him up and I'll wipe him off. And she got him up, get the glass out of his hair, wiped the jelly off of him, and got him all halfway straightened. A big mess was in the kitchen. And so then she went and she talked to him. And she said, Jim, she said, why did you go in the kitchen and mess with Mother's jelly? He said, I just love strawberry jelly. I just wanted a little, not far I could get one. She said, well, sometimes we can't do what we think we should, can do. And we should ask first. And so I, she got him all cleaned up, and he was really well. Then, of course, she had to take him to the bathroom <coughs> and give him a few actions. After that, he took care of the kid.
morning. <laughs> Sometimes I get up here, I don't know if it's morning or if it's evening. <laughs> but anyway, um, we have a father who can.
chapter 7 once again. Thank the choir for that. Amen. 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 It's always difficult when you got to get up front. Now, they was going to sit there for a little while. I was going to sit right there with them. <laughs> you always, no matter how many times you come up here, it's always, you know, like, well, you don't know, but yeah, it's, it's the same feelings. Amen. But God is good, amen. That's why it's, that's why it doesn't come from you. Amen. You're gonna ask for the Holy Spirit to speak through you. Amen. amen. So it's not coming from me, it's through God, through the Holy Spirit, amen. So that's how we word of prayer, so that can happen also. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for this blessed Holy Sabbath. Now we're asking for the Holy Spirit to sit me down, speak to speak through me to get the word that you have for your people to have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. amen. Uh, the title of my message this morning, which you have seen it, When Good People Do Bad Things. Amen. You think good people do bad things? No? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Are you good people? You do bad things? Oh, why is that? I'll find out this morning why, why us good people do bad things. Amen. And our text this morning, let's go to First Samuel chapter 13, 14. Verse 14, that's one of the tests that wasn't in the bulletin, but that's one I want to read. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. You need your Bibles today, amen? Y'all got your Bibles? Amen. Phones, whatever you got. I don't, I don't care which, which way, but something. There's nothing you'll have to listen. 1 Samuel chapter 13, 14, Old Testament. Are we there? And it says, But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. A what? A man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Amen. So the Lord was looking for someone after his own heart. I wonder who that was. Let's go to second chapter. Turn right over to what means the second Samuel chapter 12. We'll find out. Some of you may already know who this is, but we'll find out who that is. Second Samuel chapter 12, we're going to read, read verses 1 through 13. This person was a man after own, God's own heart. Second Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. Are we there? Amen. It says, Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little few lamb which he had brought and nourished. And he grew up together with him and with his children. He ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his own bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. And the traveler came to the rich man and refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for the wayfaring man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So David anger was greatly aroused against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. And he shall restore fourfold for the lamb because he did this thing, because he had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping, and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had, had been too little, I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You are killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You are taking his wife to be your wife, and you are killing him with the sword of the people of Adam. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me and taken the wife of the Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes, and give them to your neighbor, and shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. Verse 12, For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the son. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You should not die. So this, this good person was who? It was David, right? But he was a bad person too, right? Amen. So our first test that we read him through someone who the prophet says was a man after God's own heart. Because it says that David was a man after God's heart. We read in the Bible, right? 
His name was David. However, our second passage of scripture somehow implicates a man who had found himself scheming, acting, and even setting up his home outside of God's own heart. And we find out that it is still the same man named David, which can cause some Bible readers to to ponder, how is that? That God can brag on a man, and that man turns out to be a murdering adulterer, which David was. That that man of God who knows the end from the beginning did not detect this future scenario that he would call David a man after his own heart. How can God know the beginning from the end and knew David was going to be like this? Somebody's please explain how David found himself in such a predicament in the first place when his heart was supposed to be just like God's heart. How can someone who was supposed to be saved by the grace of God commit such a grievous sin? These questions make an inference in the mind that sometimes good people, not sometimes people, not wishy-washy people, not even fair brother my people, but good people can sometimes do bad things. Amen? Amen. We remember the story well. We remember that David committed adultery with Bathsheba, right? And that Bathsheba got pregnant, and that David had her husband killed, and then David took Bathsheba to be his own wife, so he wouldn't look bad before his congregation. And we just read, and we just read that God sent the prophet Nathan, came in and told David all the mess that he did. God has a way of revealing that God has a way of revealing that what we think nobody knows, and if you think the moral story is, be careful that your sins will find you out. There may be a truth to that statement, but today God will have us study a deeper propensity. Amen? So things will find us out. Amen? Amen? So I believe we all can say that David, David wasn't a bad man, right? Because as we read the things about David, we, uh, David, we don't read that David spent a night in jail, do we? We don't read that David was smoking drugs or getting high or David was drinking alcohol or messing with wild women or disrespecting authority or falling asleep with church or talking back to his parents or cheating to get ahead. We don't read none of that about David when we read about David. The only thing I heard when we read about David that he tended his daddy's sheep, right? He wrestled a lion and, and a bear with his own hands. He dropped a 10 foot tall uh, giant named Goliath because he was messing with God's people. He played the harp in church. He was spent in authority even when that authority didn't like him. In fact, before this one event, everything we read about David testifies that he was a good man. But I'm here to tell you, bad things are not always done by bad people. Sometimes even good people can find themselves doing bad things. And so we find out some good people, some did bad things in the Bible, and uh, some did. Abraham uh, was good, right? But he lied about his own wife. David was good, but he was adulterer to make him bad. Uh, Moses was good, but he disobeyed God and struck the rock, and struck the rock twice. Noah was good, but he ended up uh, one night in a drunken stupor. Yeah. Samson was good, but he delivered his heart over to the light. Yeah. Peter was good, but he denied Christ when Christ needed him the most. All these folks are good, right? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not nearly as good as they were. But if they can make a mistake and still make it into the Lamb's Book of Life and still be saved, there's hope for me and you, right man. Yeah. So if all these good people could do these bad things, I mean, I'm not giving, I'm not saying I'm giving you permission to go out and do bad things just because they did like this. But it just shows us that good people can't do bad things at the same time, right? But who among us is really good? Jesus said it best when he said in Matthew 19, when the rich young ruler came to him and said, "Good master," Jesus replied, "Why callest thou me good?" There is none good but who? One, and that is God. And how true that is, everything God is, does, and touches is good. Even at creation, when God created the earth, he stepped back and saw that it was what? What did he say? It was good. He brought forth the grass and the trees and all kinds of fruits. He stepped back and said what? He said it was good. He made the sun to rule by day and the moon by night in Genesis 1.18. And God said it was what? He created the living creatures that moved within the waters and every wing fowl after their kind. And he said what again? That it was good. He made every beast of the field and every creepy thing after their kind. And he said it was good again. And the final, he put his finding, he put his crowning act in creation and made man. And slowly constructed the woman and put them in the garden. He stepped back and looked at all that he made and said what? Very that good. it was good. And just in case you are sitting here and don't know it. David invites everybody to taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's why we say God is what all the time. And all the time, God is what? Good. Amen? Oh yes, God is good. 
But the rest of us are only good as long as God is in us. Amen. Because some of us are, are good. Members who sometimes do sacred sin. Yeah. Husbands who sometimes do sacred trick, uh, cheating. Children who sometimes go astray. Yeah. Wives who sometimes try to play. Yeah. Parents who, who sometimes can be too coarse. Yeah. Adults who sometimes have no remorse. Yeah. Leaders who, some, who can sometimes get in the fight. Yeah. Christians who sometimes don't act Christ-like. For the Bible says that we have all sinned to come what? Short of the glory of God, right? So we all do some bad things, amen? amen. Even though we call ourselves good, we still bad. <laughs> the Greek word for the sin is, and I'm just going to spell this word to you because I'm going to tell you I can't say it. And let's see if one of you can say it. A-J-M-A-R-T-A-O. What does that say? Thank you. <laughs> Which means, in the Greek, we miss the mark. It pictures the target of every Christian is to aim his or her arrow to the land of the glory of God. But maybe while we were aiming, we, we took our eyes off the target. We became distracted by that one sin which so easily besets us. We stopped concentrating and stopped focusing on our target. Or we didn't judge our distance correctly. Or we weren't thinking with a singleness of mind. And we released our arrows and they fell short of the glory of God. We missed the mark. We What's that word? That's what we did. We missed the mark. <laughs> and some of us have been missing the mark so much so we don't even feel like picking up the gospel error anymore. We don't feel like picking up prayer meeting anymore, personal devotion anymore, studying our Sabbath school lesson anymore, praying and agonizing anymore, fasting with sincerity anymore. Not only that, we don't feel like loving each other anymore, praying for one another anymore, or visiting each other anymore. Why? Jesus said it best in Matthew 24, 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Which tells me the more we sin, the more we miss the mark, the more difficult it is to cultivate and display the love of God in our lives. Because you can't sin against God and possess the love of God at the same time. We're missing the mark. Amen? But why do good people do bad things? Why is that? So let's turn to Revelation 12, 12. Why do good people do bad things? Why did David do what he did? You know, he did some really bad things. You know, he killed, he adultery, everything, but God still called him a man after his own heart. Wow. Revelation 12, 12, we're there. Let's find out why do good people do bad things in Revelation 12, 12. And it says, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the heavens of the earth and the sea. Where are we at? Are we here on earth? For the who? Yeah. The devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. So why we do bad things? Because that old devil, right? And he knows he has a short time, but we think we got a long time. You know, we think we here on earth forever. You know, we born, and, and the Bible says you're lucky to live. If you're blessed, you're going to live to be 70 years old. Amen? Some people have already made it and been blessed past that time, amen? But when you start getting older, 70 don't look too far away. I'm 57, and it's like, ooh, 13 more years, and if I'm blessed, I'm going to be done May 7. But the devil has come down to this earth to cause war and to get into us, amen? So that's why good people do bad. That's one reason why good people do bad things. Uh, go right into Revelation. We're still in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. It says that the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's talking about us sitting right here, right here today, amen? amen. Hey, he's making war. He come down to make war with us, so why we do bad things? Because the devil is here, and he come to make war with us. And you know he's on, on us daily, amen? amen? And every little thing, he's always going to be on top of you, amen? amen. But hey, like the like David, though, we can get through it, Amen. And let's see, let's, let's see some other reasons. Psalms 51, 5. Let's go to Psalms chapter 51, verse 5. We're going to see why, we're trying to see why we do bad things. Amen? So far we found out it's because of who? Yeah. Because of the devil. Amen? Psalms 51, 5. And it says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin, my mother conceived me. So we were born in sin. Amen? Yeah. You, no one was born perfect. It says we were born in sin. 
No one was born, born perfect in here. And we're still not perfect to this day, right? We said we were born in sin, and we said each and every day. But guess what? We got an advocate with the Father, and we can ask for forgiveness of sins. So what you said, you need to be asking for forgiveness of sins also, amen? amen? So we were born in sin. Let's go over to James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Back in the New Testament, we're going back from old to new, amen? The Bible is relevant, old and new, to this day. James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Towards the end, I'll be there, amen. And it says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's filled wrong, brings forth death. Amen. So this is this is why we, the good people, turn uh, do bad things because each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Right. So don't be saying the devil tempted me. The devil, your own desires and your own, you've been enticed, right? And then you conceive to it. Amen. Then you conceive to it, and it gives birth to sin. So, you know, we sin on our own. We can't blame no one but your own self when it comes to the things that we do right now. Because you're the only one that's going to take yourself to heaven. It's your choice. It's your choice. So we do, you know, we, we let the devil in. We let him get into us. So, you know, these are the reasons why we do bad things. Amen? Amen. And let's go to Romans 17, 7, chapter 18. Romans chapter 7, verses 18 to 23. Romans chapter 7. Go back a couple chapters, Romans 7, and we're going to be looking at verses 18 through 23, and we're seeing why good people do bad things. And we're starting verse 8, 18, and Romans chapter 7, it says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells, for to will is for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do I do not do, but the evil I will not to, I will not to do that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find in the law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. You know, we will live to do good, but we do what? bad, you know, because because of Satan, right? Because of the devil. But we can get through that, amen? So what do we do when we find ourselves doing bad things? I mean, really bad things, like maybe committing adultery or planning someone's murder. Now, 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 this has nothing to do with none of y'all here, I know. Lusting after the flesh or cheating on your spouse or getting caught up in gang activity. Like I said, now, this, this is, uh, I'm talking to the wrong people, nothing this is that's nothing to do with none of you. But not just that, I mean really bad things. Maybe this has something to do with some of you. Uh, holding back a portion of our time off from the Lord. Or slandering someone's character, whether it's true or not. Or abusing family members, whether it's our biological or spiritual family. Or lying to one another. Or disrespecting the house of God with bad behavior and negative attitudes. Or gossiping over Sabbath dinner. Honey, you didn't hear this from me, but this is the latest 401. Did you know? Or causing strife and disruptions inside of the church. Oh, we, we may not think these things are really bad, but God views them as evils that he hates. Amen. If you don't believe me, let's turn with me to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. God hates these things that we do, that, you know, and, and we think we're not bad, but a lot of these things that we do right here. But God, let's see what God thinks about this. And Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. Proverbs chapter 6. Verses 16 through 19. And let's see what the Bible has to say about these. What the Bible calls it, actually. And starting with uh, verse 16, it says, These six things the Lord, what? Hey. Mm. The Lord used a word like that. He hates things? Wow. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I'll keep going. A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, 
a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and run into evil, mm. a false witness who speak lies, and one who sows this, and one who sows discord among the brethren. God says these are what? These are an abomination to him. It means that he hates these type of things. And these things are going on right here in the church. And one of the Christians. And God says, no, they're an abomination to me. I hate them. So let's go on and find out what else is an abomination to the Lord. I mean, really bad thing in God's sight. Let's go to Leviticus 11 11. And don't y'all take I'm just giving y'all the word of God this morning. Amen. So I'm just a messenger. So you take it however you want to take it. Amen. Amen. But we we'll hope that you take it in the right way. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So we all have a work to do. And that's why we're here today. Amen. Amen. You built Leviticus 11, 11. Some things you may not want to hear, but you have to hear anyway. Amen. Amen. Because God has, has ordained these to give it to you. Amen. Amen. Not only to you, but to myself. Amen. Leviticus 11, 11. Chapter 11, 11. And we're talking about things are an abomination to God, which means he hates these things. 11, 11, they shall be a, an abomination to you. You should not eat their flesh, but you shall regard their carcasses as an abomination. And that's just one thing. And that test is talking about flesh eating. I know we keep hearing that, and we don't want to hear it, but God says it's what? What did we just say? He just said it was? It's an abomination to him. You know, and and no, we keep saying, oh, the church keeps talking on that and talking on that, you know, and or the pastor keeps talking on that, but it's in the Word of God that we find out that it's an abomination. You know, we're not getting into everything that he says for us to eat and not to eat, which most of you have heard that sermon over and over and over again, what you should eat, what you eat, should eat, when we say, well, this is clean and that is unclean, but you know that you know now that everything is unclean because none of us are eating it right anyway because it says you eat it right and should be kosher and the blood should be drained from it if you are to eat it. So it's an abomination to God. It means that he hates it. Amen? Amen. So not my word, but God's word. And so we got to take what the word of God says and, and stop saying that, uh, stop using the words, well, I, I just you can't give it up. You know, but it's funny to me that we can give up other things in the church still so easily. But to come things that we don't want to give up, well, I just can't give it up, Lord. It'll be all right. I ain't going to lose all the heaven. But we just read that what, it's a what? It's an abomination, meaning that he hates it. So I think that we can give it up. It's just a mind. It's just a matter of doing it, right? And I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about, when I get started, I'm talking to myself. I preach to myself also. And so the preachers just ain't preaching to you, preaching to me, right? And so we all have our of where we should be and where we, should, and where we shouldn't be. But you know what you got to do? I'm going to give you a, a quick testimony because... I, you know, me, I go off and on, born, born seven eight minutes, born, but but grew up and all that, right? Off and on, off and on, off and on, right? But you, we gotta stop using the excuses. We gotta stop using the excuses, though, right? Amen? Amen. And do what the word of God says. So I was talking with one of my elders uh, from California the other day. We was talking, and, you know, this brother loves chicken, and that he eats chicken every day. And so, uh, <laughs> right? And so uh, we were talking yesterday. You know, we were talking about how do we you know, how do we get people in the church and how do we get young people in the church and, and, and we got on such as that we, we ended up on, 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 on eating flesh, you know. We, we stayed on home for about an hour, we on, on eating flesh, right? And so, you know, we got to the point where, you know, we both said, well, what do we, we're going to give it up right now, right now. We, me and you, we're going to make this back with the Lord, we're going to give it up right now and we're starting right now. Amen. Amen. Some things you just have to do the Lord, but God is leading you. But the Holy Spirit has to lead you, right? The Holy Spirit got to lead you. We got to, all of a sudden, we got to stop making excuses, amen? Because God says, this is an abomination to me, which means I hate it. He hates it. And so what you're not doing it the right way, I'm sorry to say, church, it's an abomination to God. There ain't no other way I can tell you. Amen? Amen. You have to, you have to die just because you, you don't need me, right? I don't think so. The world has it better. We have the truth, and we've not had it for so long. And the world is doing better than us when it comes to that, right? They even know better than us. They can teach us. Amen. Now, that's enough of that. Amen. Amen. And let's go move on. Deuteronomy 18, verses chapter 10 to 13. We, things that are abomination to God. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 to 13. We'll just find out a few things. Why good people do bad things. Amen. And what's abomination to God. 
18, are we there? Verse 10, there should not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spirit, or one who calls upon the dead. For all who do these things are at what? Abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. So all witchcraft, all these sorceries, all these different types of things, these Harry Potter and all this kind of stuff, God says, this is an abomination to me. Don't even get involved with it. Even, don't even watch them TV shows on, 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 uh, 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 that have anything to do with, uh, you know, uh, going against God and these spirits things and all these type of things. Abomin when you, you bring them things into your home and bring them to the TV, them things come into your home. And you wonder why things going on in your house? That's why. <laughs> because you brought the devil in there. And he ain't leaving. Because you're inviting him in. Right? Because God said, this is an abomination unto me. Amen? Amen. Then let's go on. Uh, Proverbs, uh, De Deuteronomy 7, chapter 7, verse 25. And we're still in Deuteronomy chapter, go over chapter 7. And I'm touching on a little bit of everything this morning, so don't take it personal. If it hits me, it hits you. I mean, that's the Holy Spirit hitting you, not me. Amen? Deuteronomy 7, 25 uh, says that you shall, are we there? You shall burn the car images of their gods with fire. You shall not cover the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it, for it is a what? <coughs> Abomination to the Lord your God. And if you get into further study on, on that text and you go through other things, this is talking about jury. And I know we don't like to hear that either. Amen? But hey, we got to give it all. And so God says, it's what? It's an abomination to, to me. As you read, and, and, and as you read the church of Israel, and, and, and that's that sin that came to God, before they come to God, God will tell them, hey, you got to take all that stuff off before you come to me. And so, read that over and over. You're not going to find, people say, you're not going to find a test that's, you're not going to find a test in the Bible that says, hey, you shall not read jury. You're not going to find that, but you're going to see, as the people sin and sin and sin. And God said, take all that off before you come to me. I'm holy and I don't want that brought to me. And we'll see that the flood and all that, God threw that underneath the ground, flooded it because he didn't want, he's not saying nothing wrong with it because we're going to have plenty of it when we get together. Right? He's just saying that up on this earth. It's not good because of what, how people uh, idolize it and do different things to it. And that's why he put it underneath the ground and man tries to go underneath the ground to try to bring it back. Uh, so, and that's a deeper study also. But, as we see right here, God still says, it's at what? It's an abomination to me, which means I hate it. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Anyway, let's go to Proverbs 12, 22. Every sermon can't be a different sermon to what you want to be, amen? Has to be some truth told, amen? Proverbs 12, 22. We'll find out why good people do bad things and what's abomination to God. Lying lips are in what? Abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. So if we're lying all the time. It's an abomination to God. He hates it. Amen? Amen. Leviticus 18, 22. I told you you had to use the Bibles today. Amen? Amen? Leviticus 18, verse 22. Be there, amen. amen. He shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is a what? Amen. So we're talking about homosexuality, amen. amen. And we got so much of that going on now, and everyone's trying to make it right. You know, even Christians, and everyone's trying to make it right. Well, we need to, you know, not go against them and, this, and all these types of things. But God says, it's what? That's an abomination to me. And you shall not do it. Amen. And one more verse on that, Leviticus, stay right there in chapter uh, 20, verse 13. Leviticus 20, 13. It says, if a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So with the, these people that uh, all this homosexuals, homosexuals going on they should be happy they wasn't living back then because they be put to death. Amen. But the same thing is going to happen when God comes to, right? Because God didn't make for us to be that way. And the Bible is very clear on it. You know, and so it's abomination unto God. 
And then uh, Deuteronomy 22, 5. Just go over another chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Talking about cross dressing, amen. We have a lot of that going on, right? Amen. It's an abomination unto God. So, we, the, and the people say, the Bible don't talk about this, don't talk about, talk about everything. You just need to touch the Bible and see what it said. What it, said. it guides your life. It tells you what you should be doing with your life here on this earth, amen. And then one more, Proverbs 28 9. This is a good one. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. So if you want to turn your ear away from what God has to say, you just don't want to believe it because you want to live your own life and make your own choices, that's an abomination unto God. Amen? So what we hear, we got to take into account and, and, you know, and just try to do what's right. Amen? Amen. So we're talking about bad things that, 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 that pleases God. Let's go to Galatians 5, 19-21. Galatians 5, verses 19 to 21, and it's in the back. And these are all right here, very abomination. We've done heard these texts before. It says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies. Envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, but which I tell you beforehand, just as I so also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen? So, uh, what's going to happen to all these kind of people? Revelations 21 and 8. I'm not giving you what I think is going to happen. I'm just giving you what the Word of God says this morning. Amen? Amen. Revelation 21 8. But it says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the adulterers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen? Amen. So means you're just not gonna make it, they're not gonna make it into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So God is good to us as he gives us chance after chance to get our lives together, right? Amen. Oh, I would be so bold to tell you that I'm sure that while we sit here and praise the Lord and shout glory, hallelujah, and praise his wonderful name. Some of us here just may have qualified ourselves in at least one of these texts here today. When you and I have fallen in this, this deep pit of sin, so far from where God has intended for us to be, the question of the hour comes to bear, is there any hope of salvation left for us? The devil would have you think no, because that's what he did when he was, when he was Lucifer in heaven. Talk about someone who was good and went bad. The Bible says that he was full of wisdom, he was perfect in beauty, he sang in four-part army all by himself, he was a Nordic cherub standing by the right side of God. Talk about someone who was good that went bad. But he started thinking to himself, I should be, cons I should be consulted about the plan of salvation. I ought to be worshiped instead of God. I will exalt my throne and be like the Most High. And he influenced one third of the angels to think like him. And in an effort to make sure they never, ever went back to God, listen to what he told them according from the spirit of prophecy. Many were disposed to heed this counsel to repent of their disaffection and seek to be again received into favor with the Father and Son. But Lucifer had another deception ready. The mighty revolter now declared that the angels who had united with him had gone too far to return, that he was acquainted with the divine law and knew that God would not forgive them. So they, they were going to turn back and heaven them angels, but Lucifer told them, no, you went too far. I know the law of God, you went too far. You, it's too late, you can't turn back. And that's what he tries to do to you and me today. No, you're going too far. You can't turn back. You done did too many bad things. You're a good person, but you do bad things. You, God ain't going to forgive you for that. And that's where he wants us to be. Amen? But that's where we're not going to be. Amen? So he's done the same things today. It is the same desire to make us feel like we can never go back to God. When good people do bad things, what is our, our solution? I mean, 
What is going to keep me from doing any more bad things? Let's go to Galatians 5.1. What is going to keep us from doing these bad things? we got to have a solution, amen? Because we all, I mean, we all said to come short of the glory of God, but what's the solution? Galatians 5 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. You know, come to Christ. Don't be entangled in this bondage. You gotta set yourself free, amen. Only way we can be set free through, through Jesus Christ, amen. And Romans, let's go to Romans 7 24 to 25. I gave you all the bad stuff. We gotta give you some good stuff now, amen. Because there's a way out. I mean, there is a way out. Romans 7 24 and 25. It says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Amen? Amen. And let's do one more. Je Jeremiah 24, 7. Then we got to get something from the Old Testament too. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 24, 7. And this is our solution is to, to get out of this mess. Amen? And this is a good one. 24-7 says, Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, I will be their God. For they shall return to me with their whole heart. Right? So God will give us that heart. He'll give us that desire to turn to him. Amen? Amen. So, when we do these things, the same desire that husband and wives never mend their ways, Parents and churches don't reconcile their relationship. Yes. Members, members in the church stay in turmoil. Yes. True friendships stay severed. Families remain broken. Deep-seated hurt is never healed. Guilt will never leave you. Sadness and self-esteem -low always stay around. Loneliness will always be your best friend. God will never give you what you've done, and you've gone too far to ever get right with God. Yes. But God has stopped by today to tell you that Satan is a liar, yes. and the yes. truth is not in him. Yes. Because God has some good news for us today. When good people have done bad things, what is our only what is our only hope? And turn to me to 1 John chapter 1, 7 through 10. This is our hope. Amen. When good people have done bad things, that's talking about all of us, amen. When we good people have done things, there is some hope. There is hope. Amen. And we find that in 1 John. This is our last text for today. 1 John chapter 1. Verse 7 through 10, and then we'll go right in from chapter 2, 1 through 3. We want everyone to be there so we can read, understand this. And we're there, amen? First John, not St. John, but First John, right back towards Revelation. Chapter 1, and we're going to begin with verse 7. Amen. Amen. It says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. If, we say that we have, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Uh, chapter 2, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Yes. And he himself is the, is the propitiation for our sins. Yes. And not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Yes. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Amen? Amen. So we have a way out. And it's simple. It's through Jesus Christ. All we got to do is ask for forgiveness of sins. Yeah. So when good people do bad things, what do we do? Go to Jesus Christ. It's just as simple as that. He made it easy for us. It's not hard. He made it easy to be saved. It says when we get to heaven, we'll say that, man, this all was easy. You know, it may have seemed hard down here as we go through our trials and our tribulations and different things that we're going to go through. But the price that Jesus paid, he did pay it all. We didn't have to die on the cross, right? We didn't have to go through all the things that he went through. Yeah. He paid it all. all we, and we don't even have to do 
He even made it easier for us. We don't even have to even make sacrifices. You know, because most of us, we would have made it back then, making killing animals and making sacrifices and all that, right? All we got to do is get on our knees. And you don't even have to get on your knees. All you got to do is just pray to God. As simple as that. And, and, and just be sincere about what you're going through, right? Everyone is going through differently. Everyone's at a different spiritual level in this room. Amen? So we're not at the same place. Some things I read today is for some people, some things are for other people, right? Take what's for you. Ask the Lord to lead and guide you. You know, all I can do is give it to you, and the Holy Spirit has to lead and change your lives. That's the only person that can change your lives, the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so, and that's what we want to do, give it all to God. Amen? Amen. And so we thank God for this Holy Sabbath day. We thank, I thank all of you who have come out today to hear the word of God. Amen. And we pray that we will do the word of God. Yeah. And we never want to end a sermon, you know, without, uh, you know, uh, 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 opening up the doors of the church, you know. I don't know, you may want Bible study, you may want, I don't know what you may want. You may just want a special church uh, prayer, but the doors of the church are now open for anyone who would want to come up uh, forward uh, as the doors of the church are opening. Because God is good. It says don't, uh, don't, don't wait. It's when the Holy Spirit is talking to you because why it says don't wait because you may not live. When you walk off this door, you may not live no more, right? So you got to turn your heart over to Jesus Christ at the appointed time. And the appointed time is now. That time is for you. Amen. So as the doors of the church are opening for a few minutes, as if you want to give, turn your heart. Totally over to Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So I pray that you all will be, have been blessed today. And remember that when good people do bad things, we have an advocate to go to. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John, for that beautiful message. Listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to do our closing hymn. And it's uh, finally 340. Please stand for our closing hymn. As Jesus says, 340.
saved. Because without him we would be forever lost. After that we will plead put our trust in him, Lord God, and help us to live by every word that proceed out of your mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for viewing our videos. Hope this is blessing for you and yours. Um, hopefully, please to like and subscribe to our videos and everything we have, every platform we have. Thank you. God bless.